Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 13th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And while I'm recording from Jacksonville, well, I'll actually be teaching virtually in Europe uh, this week. So recording of the podcast will be a little bit at off hours based on the European schedule, but the podcast should still go live at the regular schedule time. On Friday, Brad took a look at the latest example of the form book malware. Now, form book has been around since 2016 ish, according to Brad. He's quoting FireEye on this one, but well, it's still going around. And the sample that Brad is analyzing, actually, he just came across on Thursday. So uh, still a current sample, still using the old Excel macro trick to install itself and if you want to walk through this particular sample and how it did its job of downloading then form book using the excel macro well uh, take a look at the packet capture that uh, pratt is linking to from his uh, diary post as Brad says in his uh, diary that uh, this type of malware should really not be a problem anymore. If you're running Windows 10 with default security settings, well, uh, then this should not really be happening. But apparently it's still worthwhile for the bad guys uh, to send out emails spreading form book uh, Typically, uh, this sample arrives like as one of those fake invoice emails. And talking about reasons to run up-to-date versions of Windows last week, we had a vulnerability in Zoom. I didn't really mention it uh, because it only affects you if you are still running Windows 7. There is an update available for this now. So if you do see an update for Zoom today, that's the reason uh, to patch this particular vulnerability. And this weekend, it was DigiCert's turn to revoke a large number of extended validation certificates. What happened here was that DigiCert did allow intermediate certificate authorities to issue extended validation certificates using DigiCert's root certificate authority. Now, DigiCert did not include these intermediate certificate authorities in its audits and this is against the agreement of the certificate authority browser forum that essentially licenses uh, lack of a better word different set of authorities that browsers trust and per the agreement that these set of authorities have DigiCert had five days to invalidate or revoke these certificates apparently about 50,000 different certificates are affected uh, by uh, this mass revocation. Now, DigiCert did reach out to customers and some of the affected intermediate certificate authorities were, for example, Cert Central, Symantec, Thought, and Geotrust. A possible result of uh, this action is that uh, as you are visiting a website with an EV certificate that was revoked, if they forgot to swap the certificate, you may actually get an error message from the website telling you that a certificate was revoked. EV or extended validation certificates are less and less meaningful these days. Browsers have pretty much stopped uh, recognizing them and really treat them just like any other certificate. So end result is just go with Let's Encrypt or some other free certificate authority. By now, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably have heard of OAuth and how it can be used to delegate privileges between different, uh, usually web applications. Now, the way this works is that you're going to a website that, for example, would like to have access to uh, social media or some other account of yours. So it will ask you for permission to access that account, and then you will be redirected to the website that it's asking to get permissions from and 
you will have to approve these permissions. Technically, this is a great scheme and very secure to get essentially limited privileges and hand them uh, to a different application without having to actually share passwords and such between these applications. However, Microsoft is warning that they're seeing this being abused more and more. Now, I remember it was a few years ago actually when we saw sort of a big incident there with Google. Someone created an application that sort of looked uh, like a legitimate Google document application, but uh, then sent email to users where this application asked for permissions to actually access a Gmail account and millions of users clicked OK and gave that uh, application permission. So why OAuth is technically a pretty solid standard, the problem here is again, how uh, all this complex technology is being represented to the user and if the user actually knows sort of what's happening behind the scenes. You should occasionally audit the OAuth privileges that you did uh, provide. Websites that do support OAuth usually do have a page or something like that where they list all of the third-party applications that you authorized to use your account. And of course, even if these applications are legitimate, it's not a bad idea to occasionally clean them out and remove applications that you no longer use. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.